Hi. Thanks for joining us for Lakeland Union High School's production of Sketches. Um, actually, nine short one-act scenes from the play Almost Maine and the play All in the Timing. Uh, along with everybody else, these high school students have had disappointments in the last year from no spring concert to no graduation in June to abnormal school days, no homecoming. And like everyone else in the building, we're trying very hard to give them the experience that they deserve uh, this fall. And that led to thinking of what to do for theater. How do, how do I do this and make it work? Um, that led me to choose uh, the production of Almost Maine and All in the Timing, something that could be rehearsed with only two or three students at a time, uh, distance, masked, and um, when the students got to be quarantined, there were several students at different times that had to be quarantined because of a possibility of exposure outside of the theater. They continued to rehearse together uh, via Facebook or, or, excuse me, FaceTime or Zoom. They were incredibly diligent. And the quality of this production speaks to the fact that they did whatever they needed to do to make this a quality and safe production. You'll see that the final uh, version is in clear COVID masks. You'll notice that. So the way to present it became the next problem. We were given uh, permission to have a live audience, but that wasn't really our difficulty. The difficulty was knowing whether or not I would have a full cast on any given night because of the quarantines. That's where Mr. Yonke stepped in. He teaches media and film here at Lakeland, and he and his students filmed each separate uh, scene in front of green screen, then produced this lovely thing that you're going to be able to see tonight. We learned so much, the drama kids and I uh, learned so much during this process, and we are incredibly grateful to Mr. Yonke and his students. Finally, there is no charge for this but you will see a link at the end of the production that will link you to the Lakeland Area Food Pantry. And we would like to ask for you to consider a donation to the food pantry in lieu of ticket sales. Uh, this is a hard, hard time, but we will get through it if we get through it together. So now sit back, relax, and enjoy sketches. It's incredibly um, appropriate for what we're going through now. The stories are of of love and loss, of reconciliation and devotion, with a lot of absurdity thrown in. Enjoy. What? I'm just having a really nice time, Pete. I'm glad, Jeanette. I always do with you. I'm glad. And the stars. The stars are just... I didn't know you knew all that stuff. After well, all this not, time, I didn't know you knew all that. It's just stuff my dad taught me. Pete. What? I love you. Well, I love you too. Oh. <laughs> oh, are you cold? No, you no, outside? no. I like sitting here, close. It's nice being close to you, Pete. It's safe. I mean, I can think of other ways we can be close, but that's not. 
that's not, that's, I like this kind of close. You know, tonight, I think I'm as close to you as I could possibly be. Well, not really. What? Well, if you think about it in a different way, you're not really close to me at all. You're actually as far away from me as you can possibly be. See, if you're sitting right next to somebody, then that's the farthest way you can be from somebody. Like, think about it. Let's say the world is round, like a ball, like a snowball. If I'm here, and you're here, then that's far. Yeah. But now you're closer. And closer. And closer. And closer. And closer. And closer, and closer, and closer, and closer, and closer, and... Hello? Hello. I thought I saw someone. I was about to go to bed. I saw you from my window. Can I, uh... Is there something I can do for you? No, I'm just here to see the Northern Lights. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's just, it's awful late. And you're in my yard. I, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was in anybody's yard. Well, uh... I uh, thought it was just a random field. Used to be a potato field, but now it's my yard. Ooh, you have a really big yard. Yeah, I guess. Well, I hope you don't mind that I'm here. I'll only be here tonight. I'll see them tonight. The Northern Lights, and then I'll be gone. Is that your tent? Yeah. So you pitched a tent? So I have a place in to my sleep. yard. I really hope you don't mind. Well, I, I don't know Do I... you mind? Well, it's just that... Oh, I think you mind. No, it's not oh, that I mind. Do you mind? I'm sorry, I didn't think... You see, it says in your brochure... My brochure? <sighs> that people from Maine are different. That they live life the way that life should be. And that in the tradition of their... Brethren in rural northern climes like Scandinavia, um, they'll let people who are complete strangers, like cross country skiers and bikers and hikers, camp out in their yard if they need to for nothing. Uh, they'll just let you. I'm a hiker, is it true? Well, uh. Will they just let you stand in your yard if you need to? Uh. Because I need to camp out. This is the furthest I've ever traveled. I'm from a part of the country that's a little. Closer to things. Never been this far north before. Or east. Did you know that Maine is the only state in the country attached to only one other state? Uh... It is. Feels like the end of the world here. And here I am, at the end of the world, and I have nowhere to go. So you see, I was counting on staying here. Unless it's not true, I mean. Is it true? Well, I, uh... Would you let a hiker who was where she needed to be camp out in your yard? Well, um... I mean, if a person really needed to. Well, uh... Really, really uh, needed to. Well, if a person really needed to, sure. But... Oh, thank you. Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. It's okay. I just really need to be here and to do this, so thanks. Sure. So, uh, oh. you're... Oh, no. What? I need that. Oh, here. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. 
So you're looking for a place to stay to see the Northern Lights? Uh, yeah, just tonight. Well, you know you might not see them tonight, because you never really know. Oh, no, I'll see them tonight. Because the timing's right. Solar activity's at an 11-year peak, and I'm in a good place. Your latitude is good. Well, as good as it can be under the circumstances. I was going to go to a higher latitude, like up to Canada somewhere, but I forgot to renew my passport. <laughs> and Alaska's just too far. So, this was the closest place I could get to in the lower 48 states that saw the northern lights regularly. So I flew, and I took a bus, and I hiked to get here, so you see, everything is in order, and boy, do you have a great sky for seeing them. It's so big and dark, and it's flat here. No trees in the way. Used to be a potato farm. Oh, makes for a big sky. Yeah. So you're a farmer? No, used to be a farm. I'm a repairman. Oh. Repair things. Oh. What? You're not a lobster man. No. I guess I just thought that everyone from Maine was a lobster man and talked in that funny way they do in Maine. And you don't talk that way. Nope. You're not down east. You're up north. And <laughs> this is how we talk up here, pretty much. Oh. And it'd be an awful long drive to work if I were a lobster man. The ocean's a couple hundred miles away, you know. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me stay and do what I have to do. It's important that I do it, and um, I have had a pretty rough go of things lately, so I really just appreciate the kindness and the understanding, and... Uh, oh, gosh. I'm sorry. Um, Are you okay? You yeah, seem sad. I, um, and also, I think I love you. Huh? Yeah. I, I saw you from my window, and I love you. That, that's really nice of you to say, but that's not, I'm not here for that. No, I didn't think you were. I'm here to pay my respects to my husband. Oh, no. Yeah, my husband. Wes. He, um, died recently. Oh, jeez. Uh. Yeah. On Tuesday, actually. And the Northern Lights. Did you know this? The Northern Lights are really the torches that the recently departed carry with them so that they can find their way home to heaven. And it takes the soul three days to make it home to heaven. And today's Friday. Today's the third day. So you see, I will see them. Because they're him. He'll be carrying one of those torches. And see, I didn't leave things very well with him. And so I just wanted to come here and to say goodbye. But what you just did right there... That's going to get in the way of me saying goodbye to him, I think, or something. And so, I think I'm just going to go find another yard. No. Yeah. I'm sorry I did that. I, I don't really know what happened. Oh, I know what happened. I'm not the kind of person that usually does things like that. Please, don't go. Just do what you need to do and uh, maybe just consider what I did. Uh, a warm main welcome or something. <laughs> You know what? I'll just get out of your way and let you do what you need to. All right? All right. All right. Uh, also, if you need anything, just give a holler. Okay. Hey. Thanks for letting me stay. I really appreciate it. Sure. I'm, um, my name is Glory, just so you know. Okay. Hi, Glory. I'm East. My name's East, short for Easton. It's a town a little ways that way where I was born. Mess up on the birth certificate. A son, Easton, born on the 6th of January in the town of Matthew, Maine, instead of the other way around. Oh. Yeah. Well, happy birthday a little late. Thanks. Well, like I said, holler if you need anything. Oh no! What? What's wrong? Uh, my heart! What? What? You have my heart! I what? It's in the bag. It's in the bag. Uh, oh! Please give it back uh, to uh, me. Please, okay, I need... okay. Thank you. Uh. Did you just say that your heart is in that bag? Is that what you just said? That your heart? Yes. It's heavy. I guess. Why is it in that bag? It's broken. What happened? Um, Wes broke it. 
Your husband? Yeah, he uh, went away. Oh. With someone else. Oh no, uh, I'm sorry. When he did that, I felt like my heart would break. And that's exactly what happened. Hardened up and cracked in two. Hurt so bad I had to go to the hospital. When I got there, they told me they were gonna have to take it out. And when they took it out, they dropped it on the floor and it broke into 19 pieces. Slate. It turned to slate. Great for roofing. Well, how do you breathe? Huh? If your heart is in that bag, how are you alive? Artificial. Really? Yeah, because my real one's broken and there's always a shortage of real hearts for transplants, so I got an artificial one. Oh. Well, why do you still have this one? It's my heart. Well, why do you carry it around like this? Well, I don't usually, but since it's the one that loved Wes, I thought I might want it with me when I said goodbye to him. Something. But it's broken. Yeah, I don't really want Because to. of him. Yeah. Because he left you. Yeah, I, I really Why would you pay your respects to him if he left you? Because that's what you do when a person dies. You pay but him respects. But he left you. Yeah, I know. And it but... seems to me that if a man leaves somebody, he doesn't deserve any respects. Well, I just didn't leave things well with him. What do you mean? And I need to apologize. Why should you apologize when he left you? Because. Because why? Because I killed him. Oh! And I need to apologize. You see, I was about a year into my recovery from when they put the artificial heart in. It was all better doing all the things I used to be able to do. And then Wes just shows up at my place one day and he says he wants me back. And I told him, Wes, I have a new heart now. I'm sorry, but it doesn't want you back. And that just killed him. Oh! You didn't kill him, though. Um, yeah, I did, kind of. Because he got so sad that my new heart didn't want him that he just kind of tore out of there and ran into the street. And there was a bus coming, and it didn't see him, and he didn't see it, and it just kind of took him right out. And if I'd have been able to take him back, Glory. he wouldn't have torn out of there like that and been just taken out like that. Hey. And so I wanted to come here and to say goodbye not as his wife at some big public service, but just privately, you know? And I... <sighs> I'm, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have... I shouldn't have done that. Don't be. I love you. What? No. Yes. Well, don't. Why? Because. I won't be able to love you back. I have a heart that can pump my blood and nothing else. The one that does the other stuff is broken. It doesn't work anymore. Let me have this. No, it's mine. But it's broken. Please. It's no good like this. Give it back to me now. Glory. Please. Let me have this. No, it's my heart. Yes, it is. And I have it. And I can fix it. I'm a repairman. I repair things. It's what I do. Oh, wow. Oh, they're so beautiful. Oh, Wes. I'm so sorry. Goodbye, Wes.
damn it. Looking. Are you hurt? No. You must be. I just smashed you. Where did I get you? In the head. In the head? Oh, come here. Are you okay? Well, is there any blood? No. Any discoloration? No. Then I'm okay. Well, I'm gonna go get you some ice. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't feel things like that. Like what? Like when I get smashed in the head with an ironing board. I don't get hurt. What? I can't feel pain. Oh, jeez, I'm crow. What the hell have I done to you? <laughs> Nothing. You're talking, Loopy. Listen to you going on about not being able to feel pain. That's delusional. I've knocked the sense right out of you. No, I'm okay. Uh, shh. Listen. I was going to be a nurse, so I know. You're hurt. You just took a good shot right to the head, and that's serious. No. It's not serious. I don't think an ironing board could really hurt your head. Because, see, ironing boards are not on my list of things that can hurt you. Hmm. And there's no blood or discoloration from where I got hit, so... Well, you can be hurt and not be bleeding or bruised. And that list is pretty reliable. Because my brother Rob is helping me make it. And I can prove it to you. See, I bet if I took this ironing board like this and hit you with it that you wouldn't get hurt. Ow! Oh! Ow, what the hell was that? Why did you do that? Oh, I'm so sorry. Did that hurt? God! Oh, it did, didn't it? Ow! See, I didn't think it would, because ironing boards are not on my list of things that can hurt you. But, gosh, maybe they should be on my list because- What are you talking about? I have a list of things that can hurt you. My brother Rob is helping me make it, and ironing boards are not on it. Well, that ironing board hurt me. Yeah. So you should add it to your list. Yeah. <laughs> should I be afraid of ironing boards? Well, if someone swings it at your head and wallets you with it, yeah. Well, it's not... I have a list of things to be afraid of, too. And ironing boards are not on this list, either. Well, they shouldn't be, really. No? No, you shouldn't be afraid of ironing boards. No? No. But they can hurt me. Yeah. So I should be afraid of them. No. So I shouldn't be afraid of them. Right. But they can hurt me. Well, if they're used in the way you used it, yeah. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like the opposite of God. <laughs> what? Well, ironing boards can hurt me, but I shouldn't be afraid of them. But God, my brother Rob says, God won't hurt me, but I should fear him. Hmm. I guess. Boy, this is getting very complicated. <laughs> what is? Well, this business of... Learning what hurts and what doesn't hurt, and what to be afraid of and what not to be afraid of. Are you sure you're okay? You're just going on and on about crazy oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I have congenital analgesia, he thinks. What? Some people... Congenital analgesia? Who thinks? My brother Rob. Some people just call it congenital insensitivity to pain, but it all just means I can't feel pain. You can hit me if you want to, to see. Mm, no. Go ahead. It won't hurt. See? Ow! See? Ow! See? Ow? Go ahead. No. Come on. No. Come on. No. Okay. You don't have to. Most people don't hit me. Most people just go away. You can go away too, if you want to. That's what most people do when I tell them about myself. So my brother Rob says I just shouldn't tell people about myself because I scare them. So I've actually recently put myself on my list of things to be afraid of. But I'm not sure he knows I did that. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, I just clocked you. You hit me. <laughs> Most people go 
away, but you hit me. Well, you had to see, but are you okay? Yeah, I don't feel pain. Don't feel pain, right. Of course you're okay, but are you sure? Well, is there any blood? No. Any discoloration? No. Then I'm okay. Well, buddy, you can be hurt and not even look it. But... but trust me, there are things that hurt you that make you bruised and bloody, and there are things that hurt you that don't make you bruised and bloody, and they all hurt. I'm... My name's Marvelin. Oh, hi Marvelin. I'm Steve. Hi Steve. I just moved in, so I don't know many people here. What room are you? Uh, room three. Second floor. Oh, we're on the third floor. Room seven. Yeah, right above us. We saw you and your husband moving. Oh, uh, he's not my husband. He's just my boyfriend, Eric. Oh. Yeah, our roof collapsed from all the snow back in December. Uh, we're just here till we can get our feet back on the ground. Oh, well, that's good. Because that's what Mob Dudley says her boarding house is. A place where people can live until they get their feet back on the ground. Yeah. My brother Rob says we've been trying to get our feet back on the ground our whole lives. Oh. Yeah. It takes some people longer than others, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are loud. Huh? You and Eric. You yell and bang. We're right below you. Oh, uh, sorry about that. We're going through rough patch. Happens. Sorry. What's it like? What's what like? To not feel pain. I don't know. I guess I don't know what it's like to hurt, so... I don't know. Is this... how you were born? Yeah, I don't have fully developed pain sensors. They're immature, my brother Rob says. Well, how and because does he know immature, that? Oh, well, he reads. But... And because they're immature, um, my development as a human being has been uh, retarded, he says. But... But he teaches me what hurts, though. Why? So I won't ruin myself. See, I have to know what hurts so I know when to be afraid. And my body doesn't know what being hurt is. So I have to memorize what might hurt. Okay. And I have to memorize what to be afraid of. Things like... Bears and guns and knives. Fear. I should fear fear itself. And, uh, uh, pretty girls. Pretty girls? Yeah. Why should you be afraid of pretty girls? Well, because my brother Rob says they can hurt you. Because they make you love them. What? And that's something I'm supposed to be afraid of, too. Love. But Rob says I'm really lucky. Because I'll probably never have to deal with love. Because I have a lot of deficiencies and not very many capacities as a result of the congenital analgesia. Wait, what do you mean you're never going to have to deal with love? Well, Why? I'm never going to know what it feels like, he says. Well, how does he know that? Because it hurts. It shouldn't. And... Plus, I have a lot of deficiencies, and not very many capacities. You know what? A lot of people do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Are you alright? Are you okay? Well... Is there any blood? No. Any discoloration? No. Then... I'm okay. Yeah, you are. I I'm so sorry I did that. It's just, you're just very sweet. But you have a boyfriend. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. And you're his girlfriend, right? Yep. And if he's your boyfriend and you're his girlfriend, that means you must love each other, right? Yeah, we do. Very much. But... You just kissed me. <laughs> yep, I did. And it's Friday night, and you're doing your laundry. Yep, I am. And people who love each other, they don't, they don't do their laundry and kiss other people on Friday nights. I've learned that. 
people who love each other, they, they go to the moose patty together, or they go dancing, or they go skating, and they kiss each other. They don't kiss other people. You know what? I think maybe you and your boyfriend don't actually love each other. You know what? Uh, I've been down here longer than I said I would be, and he doesn't like that. Who? My boyfriend. Who you love? Yes. Very much. Yes. Even though you just kissed me? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell my brother Rob about this. No! Don't talk to your brother Rob about this. Um, tell him to stop teaching you. What? Whatever it is he's teaching you, tell him to stop. What he's teaching you it isn't something you want to know. But I have to learn from him. <sighs> Look, I was going to be a nurse, so I know. You need to go to a doctor and not have your brother read whatever it is he reads. But... You know what? I gotta go. Right. You gotta go. Mm -hmm. You're leaving. That's what people do. No, I just have to... I told you, Eric doesn't like your it Your boyfriend? If... Yeah. He doesn't like it if I'm down here longer than I said I would be. And <laughs> I've been down here longer than I said I would be. Oh, I'm sorry! Ow. I'm so sorry! Are you alright? I can't believe I just did that to you again. Oh. Wait! What did you just say? Ow. Sandrine! Jimmy! Hey! 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 How are you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. How are you? Good, good. Um, how, how are you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. Great. How are you? Uh, good. G great, great. Um, how are you? Great, great. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. You look great. Oh, no. You look great. Thanks. You look so great. Thanks, Jimmy. You look so pretty. So pretty. Thanks. Uh, here, have a seat. Oh, Jimmy, I can't. Come on, I haven't seen you in oh, months. Yeah. And months, and months, and months, and months, and months, and months, and months. <laughs> How does that happen? Live in the same town as someone and never see him? I... Don't know. I mean, I haven't seen you since that night before the morning when you just, when I woke up and you were just gone. Yeah, I oh. look at you two tucked away in the corner over here. Lucky I found you. Is the man and his lovely lady ready for another round? Oh yeah, sure. No, we're, we're not together. Oh, well, used to be. We're all set, thanks. Uh, well, don't you want we're to? We're all set. Okay, yeah, well, good. Okay, well... Holler if you need anything. Okay. No, really. You gotta holler. It's busy up front. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So, you uh, here with anybody or? Yeah, the girls. Oh. Yeah, we're up. Girls night. We're in the front and. Actually, I just had to use the ladies' room, so I should. Really get back to them. Come on, they'll survive without you for a minute or two. Here, um, so what's been going on? How you doing? Well, I... Uh, did you know that I took over my dad's business? Yeah, that's great. Uh, I run it now. I heard that. Running the business. I heard that. Running the whole show. Congratulations. The whole shebang. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Thanks. Um, we still do heating and cooling. Yeah? Yeah, we've expanded too. We do, um, flooring. We shampoo. Yeah, it's a lot of work. A lot of work. I'm on call a lot too, you know. Weekends, holidays, you name it. Because, you know, if the heat goes, people die. It's serious. Yeah. Yeah, like, I do Thanksgiving, Christmas, because, well, I let the guys who work for me, like East, helps with the pair sometimes. Um, I let them have the day off so they can be with their families. Since, well, I'm all alone this year. Oh. Yeah. 
I uh, really don't have anybody anymore. Really. Brother and sister got canned, so they left town. Right. Mom and dad retired, moving south. Yeah, I heard that. Vermont. Oh? Yeah, winters there are a lot easier, and, oh. I don't know if you heard, but then Spot went and died on me. Oh, Jimmy, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was old. It was his time. It's a good fish, though. But, and so, like I said, I really don't have anybody anymore. Really. So, like, I was wondering, would you, uh, maybe like to come over? You know, to be fun, catch up, hang out? No, Jimmy, I can't. And I forgot to tell you, don't forget. Friday night special at the Moose Patty. Drink free if you're sad. So if you're sad or if you two little lovebirds are ready for another couple of rounds or something, you let me know, all right? No, we're not okay. together. Okay. 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 So, uh, what'd you say? You want to come over for fun? No, Jimmy, I can't. I can't. I really got to get back with the girls. Oh, come on. No, but like... But yeah, Jimmy, yeah. I got to get these... Oh, God. I've been meaning to tell you this for a while now. There's a guy, Jimmy. I've got a guy. Oh. Yeah. Well, um, good for you getting yourself back out there again. Yep. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, well, actually, it's more than me just getting myself back out there. Moving on. This is actually my bachelorette party. I'm getting married. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's... I thought you said you weren't gonna do that. You know, get married. I thought it wasn't for you, you told me. I guess it just wasn't for you with me. So, uh, who's, who's the lucky guy? Martin LaFerrier, you know him, forestry. Oh, oh yeah, the ranger guy over in Ashland. Yeah. Guy's a legend, legendary. I mean, if you're lost on a mountain in Maine, he's the guy you want looking for you. Yep. I mean, if you're lost out there in this big, bad northern world, Martin LaFerrier is the guy you want to have go out there and find you. And he found you. <sighs> yeah, I, I'm sorry I never told you. I actually thought you would have known. I, I thought you would have heard. How would I have heard? Well, you know, people talk. How about the things they know you don't want to hear about they don't? And you know, I gotta be honest, that's not something I would have wanted to hear. So, uh, when's, when's the big event? Um, tomorrow. Really? Yep. Well then. Hey! What are you doing? I'm, I'm calling her waitress. She said holler. Hey! Who's your name again? I, I don't know. She's new here. Hey! What are you doing? We gotta celebrate. You got found. You, you, you deserve it. He's quite a guy. Huh, Jimmy? And you too. You quite a, you're quite a girl woman person. Jimmy? Hey! Jimmy, what are you... What's that? What? That. Huh? Oh, nothing. Tattoo. Hey! What? Tattoo. Nothing. Hey! Well, when did you get that? Oh, after you left. Hey! Well, what's it of? What's it say? Nothing. No. Hey! 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 No, no. Villain? Villain. Who's villain? Villain. It's supposed to say villain. What? It's supposed to say villain. Well, it doesn't say villain. It says villain. I know. I spelled it wrong. Oh, what? They spelled it wrong. It says villain, but it's supposed to say villain. Well, why is it supposed to say villain? Why would you want a tattoo that says villain? Because. 
cause why? Just cause. Just cause why? Just cause, well, if a guy's got a girl like you, I just think that losing a girl like you, driving a girl like you away. Jimmy, you didn't drive me away. It's criminal. It's plain criminal. It's, it's villainy. And so I, and it should be punished. And so I punished myself. I, I marked myself a villain so the girls would stay away and I'd never have to go through what I went through with you again. Can I kiss you? No. Hey, I said no. Sorry. You can get that undone, you know? Yeah. I gotta go. Yeah. Hey, um... I'm glad you got found. Thanks, Jimmy. Hey, sorry. You were waving me down. I saw you, but it's just so busy in the front. There's this bachelorette party. Oh, those girls. Good thing it's not drink free if you're glad, because those girls are wicked glad. Gosh, I had to fight my way through just to find you. But I did it. I found you. So what can I do you for? What do you need? Another round? Uh, no, thank you. I'm, I'm good. Thanks. Oh, pal. Um, um, well, remember. Moose Patty's special. Drink free if you're sad. Just tell me if you're sad and you'll drink free. Say the word, let me know, because I know from sad, and you're looking pretty sad. Okay, well, my name's Villian, if you need anything. Just ask for Villian. Villian? Yeah? Hi. Hi. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sad. Um, I would, I, I'd just like some chili, please. Uh, Villian. Yeah? I'm glad you found me. Aww. I'm glad you found me. That's adorable. It still feels like you're mad. I'm not mad. But I you just, were. I wish you'd you are. Your attention lately. You're mad at me. I'm not mad, Phil. I had fun tonight. I thought. Skating, I thought it would be fun. Did you have fun? Yeah. Good. I'm sorry I was late, Mars. Uh, Chad called me into the mill. I, I had to work. It's fine. I understand. You had to work. I did. Phil, where is my shoe? What? My shoe. I can't find it. Well, it's got to be here. Where is it? Is this you trying to be funny? No. Because it's not funny. I, it's cold out here. Well, you're the one who wanted to go skating. Phil! We'll find it. It's got to be here. I'm not mad. I was never mad. I was disappointed, but now I'm done. Mars. Skating. I thought it would be fun. It get was. Us, get us away from all the stuff. Get us back to where we used to be. We went skating the first time you kissed me, you know? On a Friday night just like this one. Remember? Right here, Echo Pond. I know where we are. Where the heck is your shoe? 
Maybe, maybe it's in the car. Where did you put on your skates? Out here or in the car? I put them on with you, right here. Well, it's not in the car. Oh, 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 shh, shh. What? Shooting star, shooting Where? star. Where? Where? Shh, I'm wishing, I'm wishing. I missed it. Yeah, you did. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. It's just not really all that surprising. What? That you didn't see it. What? The shooting star. Why? Because you don't pay attention, Phil. See, when you say things like that, it feels like you're still mad. I'm not mad. Where is my shoe? Gosh, maybe it is in the car. It's not in the car. I mean, I have one skate on already. It's not like I'm gonna put one skate on in the car and the other one on out there. I changed out there, didn't I? With you, Phil? Phil, it's not like I'm gonna put one skate on in the car and put the other one on out there. But I can't find it. Gosh, this is the weirdest thing. It's not in the car. I'm not gonna put one skate on in the car and the other one on out here. What's wrong? Huh? Oh, uh, I'm just making a wish on my own. On a regular one. Oh. Wanna wish on it with me? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. Which one? Uh, Sea Hedgehog Mountain? Uh-huh. Straight up. Right above it. The bright one? Yeah. That one? Yup. Right there? Yeah. Phil. Yeah? That's a planet. What? You're wishing on a planet. That's a... Yeah. Well, how do you know? And it's when you wish upon a star, not when you wish upon a planet I know, or Saturn. I know. How do you know? Set on the weather, Phil. Saturn's going to be the brightest object in the sky all month. They've been saying it on the weather all week. And your wish is never going to come true if you're wishing on a planet. Well... you got to pay attention. See, why do you keep saying that? Because you don't. What are you talking about? Phil. Happy anniversary. Huh? Happy anniversary. That's what I'm talking about. I, I knew you were mad. I'm not mad. You're mad at me. And pretty soon out of nowhere, things are going to get ugly. Phil, I'm not mad. I'm frustrated. I know I missed some things, Mars. I'm sorry. But I got to work. I got to work a double when Chad needs me at the mill. He's helping me. Us out, you know? I know, I no, know. No, you don't know. Me working is for us and the kids. And it's a lot sometimes. And it messes me up. Phil, you gotta work. I understand that. What I don't understand is why I'm lonely, Phil. I got a husband and a couple of great kids and I'm lonely. You just, you go away. And I don't know where you go, but you go somewhere where you can't pay attention. And you missed your son's first varsity hockey game. Hockey equipment costs money. And you forget Missy's money. birthday. And you forgot your anniversary. I mean, I brought you here hoping that you'd remember about us, but you didn't. And that makes me so mad, I don't know what to do anymore. You lie. What? You lie so bad. What? You're mad at me, but you don't tell me. Even when I ask you over and because over you again. you wouldn't pay attention no, even no, if I no, did no. tell you. Because you don't know how to tell me what you feel like about me anymore. Maybe that's why I go away. So I can know where I am for a second. And you know what? It's lonely there too, where I go. And you sent me there. You went away a long time before I did. Now all you do is lie. I don't lie. Yes, you do. You tell me you're not mad, but you're mad. You tell me you had fun, but you didn't. You didn't have fun tonight, did you? No. But you kept saying you did. I didn't. I didn't have fun with you, Phil. I don't have fun with you anymore. Did you? No! I had a rotten, lousy time. Well then, what are we doing? What are we waiting for?
Mars. To you. Okay, what's going on? I th thought you weren't coming over tonight because of Sandrine's. Hey, are you okay? Shh! Lendl, I want it back. Huh? I want it back. What? All the love that I gave to you, I want it back. What? Now! Uh, I. What? what I've got yours outside. What do you mean? All the love you gave to me, I've got it outside. I, what? I don't want it anymore. I don't understand. I've made a decision. We're done. What? We're done. I've decided. And so, I've brought all the love you gave to me back to you. It's the right thing to do. Uh, I... It's outside. You said... So I, I can get it for you, or you can get it. Well, what if I don't want it back? Well, I don't want it. What am I supposed to do with all of it now that I don't want it? Well, I don't know. Well. Under the circumstances, under what cir it doesn't under seem what right circumstances? for me to keep it, so I'm Gail, getting it back. What are, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? I told you, Lando, I'm getting all the love you gave me and I'm giving it back to you. Well, I don't want it back. Whoa. Need help? Nope, I got it. It's not heavy. Here you go. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. Whole lot. Yeah. Well, what do you want me to do with all this? I don't know if I have any room. Well, I guess you'll have to find a place for it, won't you? And now, it seems only fair for you to give me mine back. Because... Because I want it back. All the love that I gave to you? Yeah. I want it back. So go get it. Lendl, go get it! Please? Now! Okay. What is that? It's all the love you've given me. <laughs> that is not... There is no way. That is not... Is that really all that I gave you? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Why don't you open it and see what's... In... Hey, hey, what's going on? I told you, we're done. Why do you keep saying that? Because... Because when I asked you if you ever thought we were going to get married... Remember when I asked you that? In December, it was snowing? Yeah. Yeah, well, when I asked you that, you got real quiet, and and everybody said that that right there should have told me everything. Everybody who? Everybody! Who? Marvelin said... Marvelin! Yes, Marvelin! Marvelin said that yes, like she's Marvelin an expert or something. Marvelin said that quiet you got was all I needed to know, and she was right. You don't love me. What? Gail, no! Shh! I... And I've been trying to fix that. I tried to make you love me by giving you every bit of love I had. And now I don't have any love for me left. And, and that's not good for a person. And that's why I want all the love that I gave you back. Because, because I want to bring it with me. Where are you going? I need to get away from things. Things? Gail, there's no things to get away from in this town. Yes, there are. You! Me! Yes, you are the things in this town I need to get away from. Because I have to think and start over. And so, all the love that I gave to you, I want it back. In case I need it. Because I can't very well go around giving your love, because that's all I have right now is the love that you gave me. I can't very well go around giving your love to other guys. Other guys? Well, that just seem There's right. other guys? Well, no, not yet, but I'm assuming that there will be. Kill, I don't know. 
And since I know now that you're not ready to do what comes next for people who have been together for quite a long time, I think we're going to be done. No! I... And, and so I think the very best thing we can do right now is just return the love we gave to each other and call it even. Oh, Jesus, Crow, is that really all the love that I gave you, Lendl? I mean, I thought, I mean, what kind of person am I if this is all the love that I gave you? No, 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 I know I gave you more than that, Lendl, I know it. Did you lose it? No, Kale, Did you lose no. it, Lendl? Because I know I gave you more than that. And I think you're pulling something on me, and this is not a good time to be pulling something on me. I'm not pulling something on you. I wouldn't do that to you. It's just... Gosh. I think maybe you should just take what you came for, and I guess I'll see you later. Lendl... Lendl, wait. Lendl, what is this? This isn't. Lendl, what is this? It's a ring, Dale. What? It's a ring. This isn't. There's no way. This is not. Oh, Lendl. This is a ring. Is this, is this a ring? A ring that you give to someone you've been with for quite a long time when you want to let them know what comes next for people who have been together for quite a long time? Yeah. Oh. But all the love that I gave to you, where is it? It's right there. But... It's right there. But... It is, that's it. You've given me so much of it over the years. Eleven. Eleven years. Eleven, yeah. You've given me so much of it that, I mean, I didn't know what to do with it all. I had to put some in the shed, some in the garage. Then when you asked if I ever thought we were going to get married, I, there was more of it coming in than ever. So I went to my dad to see if he had any suggestions. And he said, got a ring yet? And I said, oh, no. He said, get her one. It's time. When there's that much of that stuff coming in, it's about the only place you can put it. He said it would all fit. And he was right. That thing's a lot bigger than it looks. And so, there it is. All the love you've given me, just not in the same form as when you gave it. Yeah. Do you still want it back? Yes, I do. Take it. Can I keep all that? It's yours. Thank you. Oh, Lendl, you didn't, you didn't have to get me a ring. That's not what I was asking. Yes, I did. It's way past time, and it's honorable. Very beautiful. Oh, Wendell. I'm so sorry. It's just... I was at Sandrine's bachelorette party and... I know. And she and Martin are already getting married already. Shh. And, and that got me thinking about us. And then I talked to Martin and she said... I'm so sorry to have... Hi, it's... Yes? I'm 
know this isn't gonna be very easy, but I was just out there all alone in the world and I got so scared because all I could think about was how I had no place in this world, but then just out of nowhere. I realized that I had one place in this world and that was with you. So I flew and I took a taxi to get to you and I just had to come see you. Thank God you're... Oh. I'm sorry. This is the house. Um, does Daniel Harding live here? I'm looking for Daniel Harding. You're looking, looking for... for Daniel Harding, yes. <laughs> he lives here, I thought. Oh, he doesn't, does he? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just thought he'd be here. I thought he'd always be here. Always. Do you know him? Big, strong guy, wrestled, heavyweight, all Eastern Maine, <laughs> strong. Do you know him? Well... Ugh, don't even answer that question. I know that's a horrible question to ask a person who lives in a small town, as if everybody in small towns knows everybody else. <laughs> I don't live here anymore, but when I did, I used to hate when people would ask if I knew someone just because the town was small. <laughs> it's almost as bad as when they'd ask if we had plumbing way up there. Because, <laughs> you know, people in small towns really don't know each other any better than they do in big towns. You know that? I mean, you know who you know, and you don't know who you don't know, just like anywhere else. I'm so sorry to have bothered you, it's just... When his parents passed away, he kept the house I'd heard. He lived here, he stayed here, I thought. I didn't stay, I went away. Most people do. Yeah, and I guess he did too. I never thought he would. I guess I just lost track. You gotta hold on to people, or you'll lose them. Wish there was something you could keep them in, you know, for when you need them. There he is. <laughs> Boy, it's cold. I can't believe I took a taxi here all the way from Bangor just to see him. That's far. Yeah. That's 163 miles. Yeah. Why did you do that? Well, I could only fly as close as Bangor, and I needed to get to him as fast as I could. Why? To answer a question he asked me. Oh? Last time I was here, he asked me a very important question, and I didn't answer it. And that's just not a nice thing to do to a person. That's being a little hard on yourself, don't you think? He asked me to marry him. Oh. And you... Didn't answer him? No. Whoa. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm here, to answer him. I mean, I didn't answer him in the first place because I didn't have an answer at the time. I mean, I was going off to college, and then the night before I'm about to go off and do what I hope and I dream, he asks me, will you marry me? Oh, I mean, come on. I was leaving in the morning. What was I supposed to do? I, I mean, don't know. I told him I'd be back with an answer before the sun came up. But then, I didn't. I left. Left him standing. Right there, actually. And I didn't make it back with an answer before the sun came up. Or at all. That sounds like an answer to me. No, it wasn't my answer. It's just, I went off into the world and that's not an answer. And I think, I think he thought I'd say yes. Well, a guy's probably not going to ask a girl that question unless he thinks she's gonna say yes. I know, and I'm afraid he waited up all night hoping for me to come by, and I just gotta tell him that I know now. You can't just do a thing like not answer a question like the one he asked me. You can't do that to a person, especially to someone you love. You loved him? Well, I don't know if, I mean, we were kids. Yes, I did, I do. I feel like I dashed his hopes and dreams. Oh, come on. You give yourself too much credit. He was young. That's all you need to get your hopes dashed. Be young. And since we all start out young, we all eventually get our hopes dashed. And I don't think you necessarily dashed his hopes. Because if you dash somebody's hopes, it's easy. Because it hurts. But it's quick. If you just said no, that would have been dashing his hopes. But you didn't say no. You didn't say anything. You just didn't answer him at all. And that's like... I know. 
That's like giving somebody a little less air to breathe every day until they die. Okay. Well, thank you. For what? I don't know. Goodbye, Hope. Goodbye. I'm so sorry to have bothered you. It's just, I really thought he'd be here and I just got so scared and... You called me Hope. How did you, how did you know my name? Danny? How about Hope? Danny, I didn't wreck- I know. I didn't wreck- I know. I didn't even recognize you. I know. You. You're so- I know. Different. Yeah. I lost a lot of hope. That'll do a number on you. Oh, Danny, I'm so sorry that I never- It's okay. Because you know what? You're early. What? You said you'd be back with an answer to my question before the sun came up. And gosh, it's not even close to being up yet. It only went down a few hours ago. You're early. That's good, you hope. So, a taxi all the way from Bangor just to tell me? Honey, Dan, Han, who's there? Han? Just, somebody needs directions. It's awful late for directions. Yeah. Suzette, listen. I'll be right in. Okay. I... What? I hope you find it, Hope. Your place in the world. Goodbye. Goodbye, Danny. Yes. Excuse me, is this seat taken? Excuse me? Is this taken? Yes, it is. Oh, sorry. Sure thing. Excuse me, is this seat taken? Excuse me? Is this taken? No, but I'm expecting somebody in a minute. Thanks anyway. Sure thing. Excuse me, is this seat taken? No, but I'm expecting somebody very shortly. Would you mind if I sit here till he or she or it comes? <laughs> they do seem to be pretty late. Never know who you might be turning down. Sorry. Nice try, though. Sure thing. Excuse me, is this seat taken? No, it's not. Would you mind if I sit here? Yes, I would. Oh. Excuse me, is this seat taken? No, it's not. Would you mind if I sit there? Go ahead. Thanks. Every place else seems to be taken. Mm-hmm. Great place. Mm-hmm. What's the book? I just wanted to read in quiet, if you don't mind. No, sure thing. Every place else seems to be taken. Mm-hmm. It's a great place for reading. Yes, I like it. What's the book? The Sound and the Fury. Oh, Hemingway. What's the book? The Sound and the Fury. Oh, Faulkner. Have you read it? Not actually. I have sure read about it, though. It's supposed to be great. It is great. I hear it's great. <laughs> Waiter? What's the book? The Sound and the Fury. Oh, Faulkner. Have you read it? I'm a Mets fan myself. Have you read it? Yeah, I read it in college. Where was college? 
I went to Oral Roberts University. Where was college? I was lying. I never really went to college. I just like to party. Where was college? Harvard. Do you like Faulkner? I love Faulkner. I spent a whole winter reading him once. I've just started. I was so excited after 10 pages that I went out and bought everything else he wrote. One of the greatest reading experiences of my life. I mean, all of that incredible psychological understanding and page after page of gorgeous prose and the way he's grasped the mystery of time and, and human existence and the smells of the earth. What do you think? I think it's pretty boring. What's the book? The Sound and the Fury. Oh, Faulkner. Do you like Faulkner? I love Faulkner. He's incredible. I spent a whole winter reading him once. I was so excited after 10 pages that I went out and bought everything else he wrote. All that incredible psychological understanding. And the prose is so gorgeous. And the way he's grasped the mystery of time. And human existence. I can't believe I've waited this long to read him. <laughs> you never know. You might not have liked him before. That's true. You might not have been ready for him. You see, you have to hit these things at the right moment or it's no good. That's happened to me. <laughs> it's all in the timing. <laughs> My name's Bill, by the way. I'm Betty. Hi. Hi. Yes. I thought reading Faulkner was a great experience. Yes. The Sound and the Fury. Well, onwards and upwards. Waiter! You have to hit these things at the right moment, or it's no good. That's happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the timing. My name's Bill, by the way. I'm Betty. Hi. Hi. Do you come in here a lot? Actually, I'm just in town for two days from Pakistan. Oh. Pakistan. My name's Bill, by the way. I'm Betty. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Do you come in here a lot? Um, every once in a while. Do you? Not so much anymore. Uh, not as much as I used to, anyway. Uh, before my nervous breakdown. Do you come in here a lot? Why are you asking? Just interested? Are you really interested? Or do you just want to pick me up? No, I'm really interested. Why would you be interested in whether I come in here a lot? Uh, just... getting acquainted? <laughs> Maybe you're only interested for the sake of making small talk long enough to ask me back to your place to listen to some music or because you've got some terrific unknown Django Reinhardt album. Only all you really want to do is and then confess that you've got a girlfriend named Stephanie who's away at medical school in Belgium for a year and that you've been involved with her off and on in what you'll call a very intricate relationship for about seven years, none of which interests me, Mr. Okay. Do you come in here a lot? Every other day, I think. Hmm. I come in here quite a lot, and I don't think I've ever seen you. I guess we must be on different schedules. <laughs> Missed connections. Yes, different time zones. It's amazing how you can live right next door to somebody in this town and never even know it. I know. <laughs> City life. It's crazy. <laughs> you know, we probably pass each other in the street every day. Right in front of this place, probably. Yep. Well, the waiters here sure seem to be on some different time zone. <laughs> I can't seem to locate one anywhere. Waiter! <sighs> so what do you... I beg pardon? Nothing. Sorry. I guess we must be on different schedules. Missed connections. Yes, different time zones. Amazing how you can live right next door to somebody in this town and never even know it. I know. <laughs> City life. It's crazy. <laughs> You weren't waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? Actually, I was. Oh, boyfriend? Sort of. What's a sort of boyfriend? My husband. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> you weren't waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? Actually, I was. A boyfriend? Sort of. What's a sort of boyfriend? We were meeting here to break up. Mm-hmm. What's a sort of boyfriend? My lover. 
Here she comes right now. You weren't waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? No, just reading. Hmm. Sort of a sad occupation for a Friday night, isn't it? Reading here all by yourself? Do you think so? I mean, <laughs> sure. What's a good-looking woman like you doing out alone on a Friday night anyway? Trying to keep away from lines like that. Oh, no, listen! You weren't waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? No, just reading. Sort of a sad occupation for a Friday night, isn't it? Reading here all by yourself? I guess it is, in a way. I mean, what's a good-looking woman like you doing out alone on a Friday night anyway? Uh, no offense, but... <laughs> I'm out alone on a Friday night for the first time in a very long time. Oh. You see, I just recently ended a relationship. Oh. A rather long-standing. I'm sorry. Well, since reading here alone is such a sad occupation for a Friday night, uh, would you like to go elsewhere? No. Do something else? No, thanks. <laughs> I was headed to the movies in a while. Oh, I don't think so. Big chance to let Faulkner catch his breath. All those long sentences got him pretty tired. <laughs> Thanks anyway. Sure. I appreciate the invitation. Sure thing. You weren't waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? No, just reading. <laughs> sort of a sad occupation for a Friday night, isn't it? Reading here all by yourself? I guess I was trying to think of it as existentially romantic. You know, cappuccino, great literature, rainy night. Hmm. Now that only works in Paris. We could hop the late plane to Paris, get on a Concorde, find a cafe. I'm a little short on plane fare right? <laughs> Darn it. So am I. To tell you the truth, um, I was headed to the movies after I finished this section. Would you like to come along, since you can't locate a waiter? Well, that's a very nice offer, but... Uh, uh, girlfriend? Two, actually, and Stephanie... Girlfriend? No, I don't have a girlfriend. Not if you mean the one I dumped last night. Girlfriend? Sort of. Sort of. What's a sort of girlfriend? My mother. I actually just recently ended a relationship. Oh. Of rather long standing. I'm sorry to hear it. This is my first night out alone in a long time. <laughs> I feel a little bit at sea, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so you didn't stop to talk because you're a Mooney or you have some weird political affiliation? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Straight down the ticket Republican. Straight down the ticket Democrat. Can I tell you something about politics? I like to think of myself as a citizen of the universe. I'm unaffiliated. That's a relief. So am I. I vote my beliefs. Labels are not important. Labels are not important. Exactly. Take me, for example. What does it matter if I had a two-point debt, a three-point debt, a four-point debt college? Or if I did come from Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Westchester County. Sure. I believe a man is what he is. A person is what he is. A person is what they are. I think so too. So what if I admire Trotsky? So what if I once had a total body liposuction? So what if I spent a year in the Peace Corps? I was acting on my convictions. Sure. You can't just hang a sign on a person. Absolutely. I bet you're a Scorpio. Listen, I was headed to the movies after I finished this section. Would you like to come along? Sure. That sounds like fun. What's playing? A couple of the really early Woody Allen movies. Uh-huh. You don't like Woody Allen? Sure. I like Woody Allen. But you're not crazy about Woody Allen. Those early ones kind of get on my nerves. Uh-huh. You know, I was, I was thinking about... The... <laughs> I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was about to head out to the movies in a while, and, um... So was I. The Woody Allen Festival? Just up the street. <laughs> Do you like the early ones? I think anybody who doesn't ought to be run off the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so how many times have you seen Bananas? Eight times. Twelve. Hmm. So are you still interested? Do you like Entenmann's Crumb Cake? Last night, I went out at two in the morning to get one. Did you have an Etch-a-Sketch as a child? Yes. And do you like Brussels sprouts? No. I think they're disgusting. They are disgusting. Do you still believe in marriage in spite of current sentiments against it? Yes. And children? Three of them. 
Two girls and a boy. Harvard, Vassar, and Brown. <laughs> and will you love me? Yes. And cherish me forever? Yes. Do you still want to go to the movies? Sure thing. Waiter! Waiter. Can I help you? Can I help you? Look, do you want to see a menu or what? Let's negotiate here. What's the soup du jour today? Soup of the day, you've got a choice of Polish duck blood or a cream of kidney. Beautiful, beautiful. Kick me in a kidney. You got it. How about this specials today? Spread out your options. Well, you've got your deep fried gizzards. Fabulous. Your calf's brains with okra. You are a temptress. And pickled pig's feet. Pig's feet. I love it. Put me down for a quadruped. If you say so. Any sprouts to go on those feet? Iceberg. So be it. Alice! Hey there, Marcus. What's up? Oh, man. What's going on, buddy? Oh, jeez. What's the matter? Sit down. I don't get it, Alice. I just don't understand. You want something? Want a drink? I'll call the waitress. No, no. Don't even try. I don't know what's going on today, Alice. It's really weird. What? Like... Right from the time I got up. What is it? What's going on? So, for example, this morning, I stopped off at a drugstore to get some ibuprofen. Big drugstore, right? Yeah. So, I go up to the counter. I say, give me a bottle of ibuprofen. And the guy gives me this funny look and says, we don't have that here, sir. I'm like, you're a drugstore and you don't have any ibuprofen? Did they have Excedrin? Yep. Extra strength Tylenol? Yep. Aspirin? Yeah. But no ibuprofen. No, and that's the funny kind of thing that's been happening to me today. It's like I go to a newsstand to get the daily news. They've never even heard of it. Could have been a misunderstanding. I checked everywhere. Nobody had the news. I had to read the Toronto hairdresser. Or this. At lunch, I went to a deli to get a sandwich. I asked for pastrami. The guy said he didn't have any pastrami. I'm like, how can you be a deli and not have any pastrami? Was this a Korean deli? This was a kosher from Jerusalem deli. Oh, we don't have that, sir. Have some tongue. Hmm. Or before coming here, I got in a cab. I, have, I asked to go to 56th Street. The guy offered to take me to Newark instead. Mm-hmm. Looking at me like I'm an alien or something. Mark, oh, settle down. I don't go there, sir. Settle down. Take a breath. What is this? What's happening to me? Don't panic. You're in a Philadelphia. I'm in a what? You're in a Philadelphia, that's all. But I'm in yes, New York. Yes, physically you're in New York, but metaphysically you're in a Philadelphia. I've never heard of this. You see, inside of reality, we, there's these things, these pockets called Philadelphias. If you fall into one, you run up against exactly the kind of stuff that's been happening to you all day. So this is very serious. Just remember, Marcus, this is a condition named after the town that invented the cheesesteak. Something that nobody in his right mind would willingly ask for. So what do I do? Do I just commit myself now and get it over with? You try to commit yourself in a Philadelphia and you're only going to get hurt, babe. So what do I do? The best thing you can do is wait it out. Someday the great cosmic train will come and whisk you up out of the city of brotherly love and off to someplace happier. Well, you're mellow today. Well, everybody has to be someplace. Uh, hello? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Cool, thanks. I'm fired. So, you have this problem. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you just say you got fired? Yeah. I wonder what happened to my pig's feet. What? Alice, you loved your job. Hey, no sweat. How are you so calm? Easy. You're in a Philadelphia. I woke up in Los Angeles, and life is great. You know Sam packed up and left me this morning? Sam left you? And frankly, Scarlett, I don't give a damn. I say go and God bless, and may your dating pool be Olympic size. But, Alice, you loved your job. The fashion industry was your life. So I'll make it into a movie script and sell it to Paramount. Toss in some sex, add in a little emotional blah blah blah. You've got a buddy film with a garment background. Not relevant enough, we'll throw in the hole in the ozone, make it easy. 
EC? Environmentally correct. Have you heard about this hole in the ozone? Oh yeah, sure. Marcus, I love this concept. I embrace this ozone. Sure, a couple of people will get hurt in the process. Meanwhile, everybody else will tan a little faster. So this is Los Angeles. Everybody has to be someplace. Wow. You want my advice? Enjoy your Philadelphia. Sit back and order yourself a beer and a burger and chill out for a while. Well, that's easy for you to say out on your cosmic beach. But if I try to get anything, I'll get a cheesesteak or something. No, there's a very simple rule of thumb in a Philadelphia. Ask for the opposite. What? If you can't get what you ask for, ask for the opposite and you'll get what you want. You want the daily news? Ask for the times. You want pastrami? Ask for tongue. Oh. It'll work great with women. What's more opposite than the opposite sex? Uh-huh. So, would you like a bud? I sure would like no. a bud. Stop. Would you like a bud? No, I would not like a bud. Good. Now there's the waitress. Order yourself a bud and a burger. But do not ask for a bud and a burger. Waitress! No, don't call her. She won't come. Oh. You're in a Philadelphia, so just figure, forget her. Forget her. You don't need that waitress. Forget that waitress. And everything to do with her. Hey, waitress! Forget you! Can I help you? Now that's how you get service in a Philadelphia. Um, no thanks. Sure. What will you have? Excellent. Uh, how about some OJ? Oh, sorry. The squeezer's broken. Uh, glass of milk? Cow's dry. Um, how, uh, eggnog? Just ran out. Uh, a cup of coffee? Oh, we don't have that, sir. Oh, uh, too bad. Got any ale? Nope. How about stout? Nope. Porter? Just beer. Um, Heineken? Heineken, try again. Uh, how about Rolling Rock? Out of stock. Schlitz. Nix. Bex? Next. Sapporo. Tomorrow. Um, Lone Star? Hardy Har. Um, how about Bud Light? Uh, just but plain Bud's all we got. Uh, no thanks. Give me a Bud! Anything to eat? Nope. Name it. Uh, pork chops? Hamburger? Uh, medium? Well done. Baked potato? Fries? And, uh, some zucchini. A slice of raw. Burn one! Marcus, that was excellent! Thank you. Excellent. You sure you've never done this before? I've been asking for the wrong thing all my life. On accident, doing it on purpose comes easily. I hear you. God, if I would have screwed up on purpose all along, I could have saved myself so much trouble. Maybe I've been in a Philadelphia all this time and didn't even know it. You could have been in a Baltimore. They're practically the same. Okay, here's your bud and a cheesesteak. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, hey, wait a minute. What is that? Um, it's a cheesesteak. No, I ordered cream of kidney and two pairs of feet. Oh, we don't have that, ma'am. I beg your pardon? We don't have that. I'm in your Philadelphia. I'm sorry, Alice. You brought me into your freaking Philadelphia. I didn't know it was contagious. Oh, I, God. I, Don't let me be in a Philadelphia. Don't let me be in well, a... Well, shouldn't you be asking for the opposite since you're in a Philadelphia? Don't you tell me how to act in a Philadelphia. I taught you everything you need to know about Philly, you jerk. But Don't maybe you tell you're not me how in to a act. <laughs> but maybe you're not actually in a Philadelphia. Do you see the cheese on that steak? What do I need for proof the flippin' Liberty Bell? Waitress, bring me a glass of water. Oh, water? We don't have that. We don't have water? What, you think we're in a sudden drought or something? Good grief. I just lost my job. Sam left me. Uh, I gotta make some phone calls. I gotta get out of here. Uh, let me out of here! I don't know. Being in a Philadelphia isn't that bad. It could be worse. I've been in a Cleveland all week. What's that like? It's like death without the advantages. Really? Care to stand? Don't mind if I do. I sure hope you won't reveal your name. Shannon. Goodbye. Hello. Wanna starve? Thanks. Yep. Everybody has to be someplace. 
So, 